right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I got a great comment here uh, from Gabriel SYT, and they say that uh, I they appreciate me calling out deceivers. Could you please summarize what the deceivers are saying that is wrong and what the Bible really says? So that's a great question, and that's what I try to do. I really do, and so that's what I'm going to do here today and then at the same time I'll try to keep it short there's sort of a fine line there of explaining what is wrong and then of course showing what is right now these guys here they're talking about they're asking a question that was posed to them what's your take on building of the third temple you see it as good or bad <laughs> alright so um, first of all I want to establish that these guys they actually think there's gonna be a third temple built or they think that it's scriptural and it's not and I'm gonna show you in the Bible that it's not uh, what they say it is <laughs> it's unbelievable I mean it really is they're getting this doctrine from other men and not from the Bible and what's interesting, I like these guys. I, I think they're they're pretty cool. They they put out a lot of good content, but on this particular matter, they're way off, way off. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to establish uh, what they say, and and uh, I'm going to show you that it's wrong, and then show you what's right. And is it a good or a bad thing? Well. Nowhere in scripture does anything mention anything called a third temple. That's true. Absolutely true. It's understood that there will be a temple that will be... Uh, did you hear that? It's understood. What do you mean it's understood? By deceivers? Anything called a third temple. It's understood that there will be a temple that will be rebuilt on that spot and if it is indeed the next one it will indeed be the third temple alright so I, I just want you to remember that he says it's understood you, you I got no Bible verse to support this idea it's just understood but that's not how the Word of God works that's not how the truth works it's not a matter of popular opinion there's the truth and there are everything else that is not true and this third temple is not true and it's very very bad so let's continue now once the temple is built and sacrifices start happening the antichrist will cause sacrifices to cease all right remember that all right so he's assuming that well there must be it's just understood we ain't got no bible verse to to uh support it well they want to use Daniel 9, and I'm going to show you. Man, these guys got it way wrong. And it's like they're getting their doctrine from people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. So maybe we ought to get into that right now. All right, so just to summarize, these guys are saying that there's going to be a third temple built, and the Antichrist is going to... I guess take over that temple <clears throat> and he's gone going to put an end or make an end of sin he's gonna make an end of sacrifices and apparently they're gonna the idea is that well they're gonna go back to sacrificing animals I think is what they're gonna say and that they're gonna the Antichrist is going to stop them from doing the animal sacrifices. I mean, just think about that. And that's never going to happen. They're not going to. Uh, they're not going to start doing animal sacrifices. That'll never happen. Now, you know, they could theoretically. They could build a third temple, and they could begin to do animal sacrifices just like what we read about in the Old Testament uh, and then the, you know somebody could uh, you know take a virgin to be a wife 
and somebody could artificially inseminate her and then they could take that child and sacrifice it upon the altar and claim that's the Christ and then everybody could agree that doesn't change the truth that doesn't change who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us and they could do all this stuff but it's not relevant to the Bible other than to say well there'll be deceivers in the last time there'll be evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse deceiving and being deceived I mean that would be the only significance to this idea that they're gonna build a temple and do animal sacrifices once again I mean this you got to be completely and willfully ignorant of what Jesus Christ has done all right so let's get into it before uh, you know my blood pressure goes through the roof here and it does it, it angers me that so many people I mean, what you're saying here is that Jesus is the Antichrist that's what you're saying and that's the problem I have with it this is nothing to poo-poo all right so he's he actually I think he starts off and doesn't he start off in verse 26 in this temple the Antichrist will cause sacrifices to cease in this temple Daniel 9 26 yeah he, conveniently conveniently starts in verse 26 and the only way you're going to be able to fool people or the only way to be fooled is to only read a portion of what's being asked by the angel to consider so essentially these guys and so many others like them they don't want you to consider the whole vision they want you to consider just a portion of it enough to where they can deceive you now let's consider the whole vision just like the angel of God asks Daniel or says to Daniel consider the vision and the vision is 70 weeks are determined upon the people upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy now, obviously right this is talking about the antichrist right I mean come on man no this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ you gotta be out of your mind yeah I mean you gotta be absolutely dumber than a doorknob I mean seriously did you forget that part already two verses later you can't remember what this is about seriously this is so incredible it's a phenomenon that there are so many people out there completely ignorant I, you know I just wonder sometimes are they willfully trying to deceive people I mean it's so dumb there's something seriously wrong with these people that are teaching that this is the Antichrist and they'll flat out lie well this is about the Christ but then the, this is about the Antichrist no 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 I mean you you've got literally four verses here you can't keep a can't keep a thought for what two minutes maybe at most it's incredible who okay so we establish I mean there should be no doubt about it this is talking about Jesus Christ 
Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, three score, two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times, after three score two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Who did he die for? Who did Jesus Christ die for? He died for you and I, didn't he? What do we read in John chapter 3, verse 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He died for us. He laid down his life for us. Um, okay, you know, what's that verse about Jesus? Uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, what is it, 12,000 angels he could send if, if his kingdom was of this world? Um... I don't remember now. Doggone it. Oh, yeah, right there. <laughs> Matthew 26, verse 53. All right, then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? So, Jesus, oh, there's probably an, a, another verse, maybe even a better verse, but the point of the matter is Jesus laid down his life. He gave his life for us. He could have fought back, but no. He willingly gave his life for us. I mean, there should be no doubt about it. This is basic stuff. It really is, man. And you can't remember that? I and mean, it's almost like, also, you know, it's like, these aren't Christians, these are Jews. Because they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And they accept an antichrist and teach that the antichrist will put an end to sacrifices all right and the people of the prince shall come that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease now Jesus did that Jesus gave his life as the perfect sacrifice the perfect offering to God you gotta be absolutely insane to suggest no Jesus didn't do that the Antichrist is going to do that. You're essentially saying Jesus is the Antichrist. I mean, you know the whole story about Abraham offering his son as a sacrifice. And the angel pulled him back from doing that. And then, so God offered his son as the perfect sacrifice sacrifice the perfect offering of sin I don't know how you can know that and then read this and not put the you know the connect the dots here I mean it's it's mind-boggling really you're trusting what 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 are you who are you trusting Jewish experts you're not going to believe the Bible. You're going to believe somebody else. And that's the incredible part. No faith in what the Bible says. But they got all the faith in the world. What some so-called expert, scholar, dum-dum will say. It's incredible. It really is, man. It's a phenomenon. 
and it's a sign that we are in the end times we are close to the very end there's no doubt about it Jesus is the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease that should be so obvious so obvious man does that even need explanation and for the L overspreading of abominations he he shall make it desolate hey, that's all they got they don't do that anymore they don't do the sacrifices oblations and all that stuff even until the consummation which is the marriage between our Lord and the church the people of God when we when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air that's the consummation that's the marriage of the Lamb and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate that's the wrath of God this is speaking of the end of the world how in the world third temple now I want you to think about this now we're not done yet let's go to oh, I want to say John 2 I'm just guessing don't I don't want to guess yeah John 2 okay so it's interesting I mean it's so fascinating so interesting because these Jews they didn't understand what Jesus meant when he said that he would destroy this temple and in three days raise it up they didn't understand and they said forty and six years was this temple and building and without that rear it up in three days but Jesus spoke of the temple of his body see Jesus died that's when he died that's when the temple was destroyed and when he rose back to life and ascended to heaven that's when the temple was rebuilt when Jesus died the temple was destroyed when Jesus came back to life the temple was rebuilt and it was rebuilt better than the old temple right now we're living in the old temple and when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then will we be uh, given the new temple and this is consistent all throughout the Bible right in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed that's when we enter in to the new temple the rebuilt temple Jesus has rebuilt the temple we're still in the old temple so in John 2 they didn't even understand it they didn't know they didn't get it even today they don't get it and why is that because they lack faith they're not trusting what the Bible says as much as I love these guys and I do love them you know, subscribe to them I've sub subscribed to them for a long time I've had conversations uh, with the gentleman on the left but on this particular matter they're lacking faith and understanding in 2nd Corinthians 3 and verse uh, starting with uh, verse 15 but even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away now this is there's a lot of uh, prophecy a lot of Bible verses that parallel what we're reading here 
Okay, I'm just using this as a clear example. That when you don't have faith, you're not going to be able to see. But when you do have faith, the veil is taken away. It's pulled up from over your eyes and you're able to see. Daniel 9 is very clear. But in order to see it, you must actually believe what the Bible says. And we read over and over, all throughout the Bible, take heed that no man deceive you. And this is what happens when people listen to what other men say. They think it's like a shortcut. You know, it's like me. When I was in school, I would look over the shoulder of this very smart Chinese girl. She aced every class, everything, every test, and so I thought I could cheat the system. I'll just look over her shoulder and write and just, you know, copy her answers. And um, a couple of times it helped me to get a, a D, but you know, she she goes so fast. She answered the questions faster than I could look over her shoulder and, and copy them on my own paper. Whew, boy, that gal was smart. Of course, I was dumb. But, nevertheless, I mean, that's what people are doing, right? Oh, let's, let's not read the Bible. Let's look over somebody else's shoulder and listen to what they have to say. I mean, is that not exactly what's going on? That's what these guys are doing. Seems pretty clear to me. Because just as the Jews don't understand the temple, and neither do these fellows understand the temple. It's embarrassing, really. It's embarrassing that so many people got it wrong. And, you know, it's embarrassing. I'd like to be able to recommend these guys, but when they, when they essentially say Jesus is the Antichrist, how, how can I you know recommend those guys really it's incredible uh, so anyways that's all I got I just hope that I answer I did it the way that you asked me to do because I absolutely agree with Gabriel SYT that I want to summarize what the bad guys are teaching and then show what the good guys really teach with the good guys being God and Holy Spirit and the Word of God and all that okay so Hopefully I've done that. Alright, and let me just say this. I appreciate the compliment here. You are a Bible expert, so you know the context and the bigger picture. I don't have that level of expertise, so I am often, I'm not often clear what the correct big picture looks like. Alright, so I want you, I want my viewers to be Bible experts and I want you guys to be scholars and more knowledgeable or at least as knowledgeable as anybody on earth and I know you can do it it's not a matter of IQ and I'll show you just make it real easy alright so here we go I think uh, is this the verse that I want here? I think it is. Alright, in and, and Psalm 19, verse 7. The heavens declare the glory of God. You go to verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You understand this, right? The law of the Lord is perfect. You know what we read in the Old Testament is perfect, converting the soul. You know the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Jesus Christ. Now once faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, right? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ is sure. You know, the, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now that word simple, that really applies to everybody. I mean, that, that in a sense, you could look at that. What helps me to when I see that word simple, uh, because I'm simple, what that another word you could use would be a dummy. I mean that seriously. Making wise the dummy. You think of we're all dummies. And you think of the biggest dummies among us. Well, the testimony of the Lord can make the biggest dummy among us wise. You don't have to have an IQ. You don't have to have a degree in diddly poop. You don't have to have, you know, training. You don't have to have certification. You don't have to have a library full of ancient books. All you need is to have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands. That's the key. That's the secret. That's the mystery. That's the amazement and incredibleness of the Word of God. The Word of God is a spirit. Oh, what's that? I mean, the Word of God is a spirit. You think of everything that God has done just by the words that He spoke. In John chapter 6, It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. The Word of God is powerful. Very, very powerful. The Word of God is powerful. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and tents of the heart. Wow! The Word of God is amazing. There's only one catch. You have to believe it. I'll just finish with this one thing. That prophecy being fulfilled and God's Word being true, proven true is a bad thing. No, no. This is a good thing. This is a very good thing. <clears throat> excuse me, that Jesus makes an end of sin. That's a very good thing. Jesus laid down his life for us. That's a very good thing. He destroyed this temple. That's a very good thing, because this temple is full of filthiness. And he has rebuilt the temple. And that's a very good thing. Right, and he has promised, and he has ascended to heaven, excuse me, he has ascended to heaven and promised to return for us so that we may enter this rebuilt temple. And this is evident all throughout the Bible. Okay, John 14, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. He's prepared a place for us. And in his house there are many mansions. So he's rebuilt the temple. And the new city of Jerusalem, the new city of God, the holy city of God. It's not over there in the Middle East where these guys are going to, they're going to build a third temple over there. The, no, 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 no. That city over there in the Middle East, that ain't nothing but uh, soon to be wasteland. I mean, you could say it's wasteland right now, seriously. No, no, that's not the holy city. That's not the holy city at all. Our holy city is in heaven. 
Did you forget what I just read you in, in John 14? Jesus is in heaven preparing a place for us. Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Our holy city is above. His kingdom is not of this world. We are not of this world. Even though we're in this world, we are strangers in a strange land. And it's my very strong opinion that we are in a very strange world right now. 